I'm going to talk about Cohen's D and why it's useful for you. And I'll do that with a couple of examples. So let's take a look at class one here. There are 15 students in the class, and they wrote a pretest, and they got 50% on that pretest. And then they were exposed to a fancy new teaching method, and their average score was 75.4. Well, that looks, that looks pretty good. It's risen by 25%. We could run, in this case, a paired t-test because it is the same sample and we're running two different tests on one student. That's why it's called a paired t-test. And it probably would come up statistically significant. But what we want to know is whether this difference is actually meaningful. And one way of doing that is calculating Cohen's d. And the way you do that is, you, have, you calculate the difference, so let's say it's 75, well it is 75.4, sub, subtract 50.2, which is about 25, 25.2. And then we take the average of the standard deviations here, which is about 17.9, that's somewhere in between, well that's exactly in between those two. So why do we do that? Well, what we're doing is dividing the difference by the average standard deviation. And we're seeing the magnitude of the difference, the size of the difference in standard deviations. In this case, it's 1.4 standard deviations. So remember, standard deviation is the spread from the, the mean, and that's actually a fairly significant spread, 1.4. All right? If we look at Cohen's rules of thumb here, then what we see is that if the difference is 0 0.10, we consider that a small difference. And when I say difference, when, when, when the actual Cohen's D is 0 0.10, that's considered a small difference. When the Cohen's D value is 0.3, we consider that a medium difference. Well, we don't, but Cohen does. And if it's 0.5 or, or larger, we consider it a large difference. So in this case, Cohen's D is 1.4 standard deviations, and that's considered a large difference. And it's an important statistic to report in uh, any paper where you are actually comparing means. Let's take a look at one more example. Class 2. They've, they've written a pretest. They've actually had a different um, experimental treatment, and they've written a post-test. And, well, you can see 15.5 and 18.6, they're pretty close pretty low scores, 15% to 18%. Most teachers might not consider that a, a winning situation, but we could conduct a statistical test on that to see a paired t-test to see if the difference is significant. And it might be significant. Let's say it was. So then we go to Cohen's D and say, well, let's take a look. Uh, the difference is only 3.1%, 18.6 subtract 15.5. And the average standard deviations, well, there's quite a spread here, is 8.2. So if we divide 3.1 by 8.2, we get 0.37. It's about a third, right? There's about three of those that go into the standard deviation. It's about a third. And we consider that a medium, uh, that Cohen's value to be uh, indicate a medium difference. In this case, it actually looks much smaller. 0.3 is rather, rather small. So Cohen's D isn't perfect, but it gives you some indication in standard deviations of how big the difference is uh, when you, when you uh, conduct a t-test or an ANOVA or compare any two numbers, or two, two sets of numbers or a group of numbers. So in summary, Cohen's D is a value uh, somewhere between 0.1 and well, it could be you know, four or five, but it's a value that tells us the a statistical value that tells us the magnitude of difference between two scores that we're assessing between two means.